The Inquisitors were one of the most feared groups in the entire galaxy. Tasked with the elimination of the Jedi, this group of Force sensitives were incredibly effective at their role. Although nowhere near as powerful as true Sith Lords like Darth Vader, they were experts at manipulating Jedi's emotions to draw them out into traps, often involving multiple Inquisitors with Purge Trooper backup. The Inquisitors did exist in Legends, and were regarded as some of the highest ranking Dark Side Adepts in the Empire. However, the role of the Inquisitors features much more prominently in canon, particularly in Star Wars Rebels and Jedi Fallen Order. The Inquisitors are also said to play a major role in the upcoming Kenobi series. So who are all the Inquisitors we know so far, and which ones could show up in Kenobi? First of all, we have the Grand Inquisitor himself, the leader of the Inquisitorius. A Powan male from Utapau, he was inducted into the Jedi Order at a young age. He was one of the few Padawans to become a Jedi Temple Guard on Coruscant. However, the future Grand Inquisitor desired more and became a frequent visitor to the Jedi Archives. However, Chief Librarian Jocasta Nu deemed him unworthy of education and refused to allow him access to more advanced Jedi texts, sowing the seeds of resentment deep within him. However, the Grand Inquisitor would grow truly dissatisfied with the Jedi Order during the trial of Ahsoka Tano. This event deserves a video of its own, but in brief, Ahsoka Tano was falsely accused of bombing the Jedi Temple. However, the true perpetrator turned out to be Baris Sophie, Ahsoka's friend and fellow Padawan. Barris had come to believe that the Jedi were the true villains of the Clone Wars and had strayed too far from their true roles as peacekeepers. The future Grand Inquisitor was one of the Temple Guards present during the trial. Barris Ophi's words rung true with the Powan, and he began to feel disaffected with the Jedi Order. During the final days of the Republic, Palpatine used this disaffection to lure him to the dark side, promising him power and the chance to read all of the Jedi texts. He would go on to be one of Vader's and Palpatine's most loyal dark side adepts, and he hunted down many survivors of the Jedi Purge. Years after Order 66, the Grand Inquisitor was eventually defeated by Kanan, and fearing the consequences of his failure, he let himself fall, telling the Jedi that some things were worse than death. However, this wasn't the end of the Grand Inquisitor. Using Sith sorcery, Darth Vader prevented the Grand Inquisitor's spirit from passing on from the mortal world, instead tethering him as some kind of tormented ghost on board a High Republic Jedi outpost. It was here that the spirit was defeated yet again, this time by Luke Skywalker. The Grand Inquisitor pleaded with Vader to be allowed to die, but Vader told him he was not satisfied with his work and refused. As he faded away into darkness, the Grand Inquisitor repeated to himself that there were things worse than death. The events of his death and subsequent damnation occurred after the events of Kenobi, and as you might be able to tell by the trailer, he will be one of the primary villains of the series. And I say might be able to tell, because many fans didn't actually recognise the live action version as he looks pretty different to the sleeker Rebels Ground Inquisitor. But let me know what you think about the change in design down in the comments. The next Inquisitor on this list we know very little about. All we really know was that she was the master of Gisera, a former Night Sister. At some point after the fall of the Republic, this female Inquisitor ventured to Dathabir in search of great power, but instead stumbled upon a teenage Gesera. This Inquisitor trained the girl in the ways of the dark side as a secret apprentice. However, she was eventually killed by Gesera using her own blade. And unfortunately, that's all we really know about the pair. An Inquisitor Night Sister team up is a pretty awesome concept, and I really hope it gets explored a bit more in the future although I think it's almost impossible that this Inquisitor will turn up in Kenobi. Another Inquisitor that will almost definitely not be turning up in the Kenobi series is the Tenth Brother. Unlike many of the other Inquisitors who were often Padawans or low-ranking Jedi, the Tenth Brother was a Jedi Master. Originally named Prosset Dibs, he soon became disillusioned with the Jedi's involvement in the Clone Wars, believing their role as generals was a step too far. During an operation involving Kit Fisto, Dibs and Mace Windu, a large number of civilians would die during a battle with the Separatist robot ADW-4. This sent Dibs over the edge, and he accused Windu of lying, 
culminating with the two masters drawing their lightsabers on one another. Windu eventually defeated him in combat and arrested Dibs. He was put on trial by the Jedi and found guilty of treason. Dibs expected his punishment to be death, but Windu intervened, damning him to the fate of a library assistant. Despite the fact his life was spared, he was quite ungrateful and he taunted the Jedi for their arrogance and failure to follow their own code. This dissatisfaction made him the perfect target for Palpatine, and after the fall of the Empire, he was welcomed into the ranks of the Inquisitorius. However, despite being one of the most qualified members of the Order, he was very quickly killed. During a mission, a surviving Jedi named Bar used a mind trick on a group of Purge Troopers, causing them to execute Order 66. The Purge Troopers fired upon the three Inquisitors, but the Tenth Brother did not react in time and was shot through the chest. One of the Inquisitors that did manage to escape this crafty trick was the Ninth Sister. Originally a Jedi, she was tortured by the Empire until she finally cracked and turned to the dark side. Her training was completed by Vader and the Grand Inquisitor, and during this time she would lose an eye to apparently show her what loss felt like. During the ill-fated mission to capture Bar, she would escape the mind trick purge troopers alongside the Sixth Brother. However, he betrayed her, severing her leg as a distraction. However, she would survive this situation and was then assigned on a mission to hunt down Cal Kestis, alongside the second sister. Although she was defeated by Kestis during a duel on Kashyyyk, she was not killed, meaning she could turn up during the Kenobi series. Next up, we have the sixth brother, a particularly nasty piece of work. As we've already mentioned, he had a deep mistrust for his fellow Inquisitors and would happily betray them as he did with the ninth sister. Originally a Jedi known as Bill Valen, he was inducted into the Inquisitor program through unknown means. What we do know is that Vader cut off his arm during a training session to teach him a lesson. After the fall of the Tenth Brother at the hands of the Purge Troopers and his betrayal of the Ninth Sister, he went on to hunt down one of the most dangerous Jedi, Ahsoka Tano. However, during a duel, Ahsoka force pulled the Kyber Crystals out of his saber, causing the lightsaber to explode in his face and killing him instantly meaning we definitely won't be seeing him in Kenobi. It was these crystals that Ahsoka would go on to purify, turning them from red to white for use in her own lightsaber. Next, we have the Eighth Brother, who admittedly we know little about, despite the fact he was in Star Wars Rebels. We do know that he was originally a Jedi, however his identity and former position is not known. We know that this Inquisitor was tasked with hunting down Maul, known to him as the Shadow. The Eighth Brother tracked Maul to Malachor, where he ran into Kanan, Ezra, and Ahsoka. After retreating and returning with backup, he went after Ahsoka and Kanan alongside the Fifth Brother. However, after a long battle, Kanan was able to damage his lightsaber, meaning when he attempted to flee using the spinning blade, he fell to his death. Next up, we have two unidentified Inquisitors that we have only seen on one occasion, a Twi'lek Inquisitor and a Red-Skinned Inquisitor. Both these Inquisitors aided the fifth brother and Vader in hunting down Eeth Koth and taking his baby for induction into Project Harvester. After this successful mission, the two Inquisitors drank together and pondered what Vader would do when all the Jedi were gone. Unfortunately, Vader overheard and pulled his lightsaber on the two Inquisitors. He had already been tipped off by another Inquisitor that these two were harboring feelings for one another, something Vader found to be unacceptable. After escaping Vader, the pair admitted their feelings for one another and planned to kill Vader and escape the Empire. After a tense chase where Vader was almost defeated, the Dark Lord froze them with the Force, before telekinetically impaling them with the other's lightsaber. The next Inquisitor is the Fifth Brother, a grey-skinned humanoid of an unknown species. Those of you who have watched Rebels will recognise him as one of the main antagonists of the series and, like the Grand Inquisitor, he is going to play some kind of role in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, with his appearance also changing quite drastically from his animated counterpart. The Fifth Brother was one of the longest serving Inquisitors, being inducted soon after the fall of the Republic and only perishing a couple of years before the destruction of the first Death Star. The Fifth Brother was also one of the most devoted. In fact, it was him who first raised suspicions about the Twi'lek and Redskins Inquisitor's love affair to Vader, 
After the death of the Grand Inquisitor, the fifth brother was tasked with finishing the job of exterminating the rebels. The fifth brother would come into contact with Ezra Bridger and Kanan Jarrus multiple times, not only during his mission to defeat the rebels, but also during his attempts to hunt down Force-sensitive children. After being thwarted many times by the Ghost crew, he eventually confronted Kanan, Ezra, Ahsoka and Maul on Malachor, alongside his Inquisitor brethren. After a long fight, Ahsoka was able to damage his weapon, leaving him defenseless. Only moments later, Maul stabbed him through the stomach with his lightsaber. Another Inquisitor who worked very closely with the fifth brother is the seventh sister. A Miriel who survived Order 66, she joined the Inquisitors soon after the Republic's reorganization into the Galactic Empire. The seventh sister would take part in many missions with the fifth brother, as seen in Star Wars Rebels. Together, they proved to be formidable adversaries for Kanan and Ezra, but that doesn't mean they were that powerful. When both of them faced Ahsoka, they were easily defeated, only to escape after calling in Imperial reinforcements. Just like the eighth and fifth brothers, the seventh sister met her end on Malachor. After a lightsaber duel with Maul and Ezra, Maul grabbed her with the Force, ordering Ezra to kill her. After he refused, Maul hurled his lightsaber at the unarmed Inquisitor, ending her reign of terror. Next up, we have a lesser known Inquisitor. The fourth sister did not use a spinning double-bladed lightsaber, like most other Inquisitors, instead opting for a lightsaber pike. Not much is known about her, although it is known that a group of rebels stole her lightsaber and armor and used it to impersonate her. Her ultimate fate remains unknown. It is also known that there was a third brother, although we don't know anything about him as of yet. There was also a third sister, who is said to appear in the upcoming Kenobi series, but right now we don't know much about her, other than she will play a role in interrogating Owen Lars and that her name is Reva. And finally, we have the second sister, the main antagonist of Jedi Fallen Order. Her story is probably the most fleshed out and is extraordinarily tragic. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing her in live action, as she was killed a few years before the events of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Originally known as Trilla, she was the apprentice of Jedi Knight, Sarah Junda. After fighting during the Clone Wars, she went into hiding alongside her master and a group of younglings. However, they were almost discovered by an Imperial patrol, but Junda decided to try and lead them away from their position. However, Junda would eventually be captured, and after being relentlessly tortured, she revealed the hiding place of Trilla and the Padawans. After receiving the same torture as her master, Trilla eventually fell to the dark side, becoming the second sister. The second sister was instrumental in hunting down the Jedi fugitive Cal Kestis. She proved herself to be especially cunning, even for an Inquisitor. As seen during her first encounter with Kestis, she had no qualms in killing civilians to draw out Jedi. However, despite her cunning and skill with a lightsaber, she was defeated by Kestis on numerous occasions. Despite Junda's and Kestis's pleas for her to let go of her hate, she refused, believing it made her stronger. Junda apologized for what she had done, but before Trilla could forgive her, Darth Vader grabbed her with the Force. Before he struck her down, she uttered her final words, Avenge us. And that is all of the Imperial Quisitors so far in canon. I'm sure with the release of Obi-Wan Kenobi, we'll see plenty more in the future. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, may the Force be with you.